Okay, I'm going to give a quick explanation of the camera settings control area over here in the cinematography window. So from the cinematography window is where you'll start and you'll set up your scene and you'll make sure the camera is working and taking the images the way that you want them to. So in the camera settings panel, you're going to see right at the top gives a, a quick explanation of what the camera settings are in this case, saying that you're at 1 13th of a second exposure and the f stop isn't listed here because and you see the f stop ring which would be the center ring is empty because i'm shooting with a a manual lens on a canon camera and and it doesn't communicate with it but if you had a digital lens you could control it uh, by sliding this area here you could control your your f stop the bottom is iso or asa and your iso can be locked people, sometimes people on a show don't want to have this adjusted at all uh, it keeps the consistency of the amount of, of noise in your images and so there's a little lock right there for that. If you shoot a test shot, it'll go in the test shot tray down here and you'll notice that um, up here in the right hand corner it says zero EV. Basically every time you take a new test shot it kind of zeroes this setting out and EV is like stops in film speak, you know. So um, or exposure value here. So if I were to move this slider now, it's saying, okay, you've you've lost one value, one stop compared to what you shot last time. And then if you take the image, it's going to zero itself back out. And it just, it's a nice little reference in case you're moving it around, you kind of forgot where you are. You went one way and then realized, oh no, I want to go the other way. Oh, I actually wanted this to be brighter. Yeah, I want a brighter two thirds. Okay, let me see how that looks. Then we have this list of options that are available on your camera. So it depends on what camera you're shooting with. Probably the most important thing to make sure you set to your liking is your image quality, you know, whether you're shooting raw file or some other other size, JPEG or TIFFs. And then we have the test shot button, which I, I've explained before, shoots test pictures that don't end up in your scene. Then we have this bar with all of these buttons and icons on it, and this represents an exposure. Now, to explain an exposure, basically, for every frame, you can have more than one picture taken. So that is useful if you, for instance, were shooting in 3D and you had a left and a right eye, you'd want to shoot frame one, left eye, frame one, right eye. But people come up with many creative ways of using this, whether it's front light, back light for getting a, creating a mat, or, or a separate green screen card goes in the shot for a second or third exposure. And sometimes even lighting tricks where you can say, well, we're going to put the fill light on exposure two, and then we can adjust that later in post. And you could treat some of your lighting more flexibly. Let me explain what is on this bar. The first thing you're going to see here is this little uh, circle with a dot. And that dot, when you click on it, that basically says I'm shooting or I'm not shooting this exposure. Now, you can't turn off exposure one. You always have to keep exposure one. But if we make a new exposure, our X2, and by the way, we can name these. If we make exposure two, now you could say, well, we're, we don't need that at first. We're gonna just shoot one frame, and then maybe at a certain point, there's a lighting gag or a front light, back light, or you need a mat, and then you can turn on that exposure, and it's numbered correctly, so that you'll be able to easily line these up in post. It's not just a new list of frames starting from one. So if I turn this on at frame 20, the frames will start at frame 20. This little button here with the L on it, that's for shooting stereo and you can switch that to L or R, left or right, and that will coordinate with setting up a 3D slider in motion control. Uh, you're basically assigning um, a, po a position on the stereo slider to an exposure. You know, this is kind of interesting. So on some projects that I've worked on, we've shot a left and a right eye of the main exposure and then it'll automatically shoot a left and right eye of another lighting or backlight and you can have this all automated and so the animator just hits the button once and Dragon Frame takes you through uh, all the positions and all the exposures. Each one of these bars can have its own set of lighting so I can go like this and say I want this to be you know stop brighter than this one so now if I shoot a test shot here see that's brighter and then if I go back to here so any of these settings can be changed per exposure this could be useful and creative it could also cause problems 
if you need them to match, like shooting a left eye and a right eye, like 3D, and you need them to absolutely be the same exposure, same everything, then we give you this link function. So that will make sure that both always have the same settings. With the exception, by the way, of being able to switch this to left to right. Okay, I'm going to unlink that. This button, this, this little arrow here says continuous shooting. So you may want two exposures that shoot automatically together, or you may want it that you shoot one exposure, and then maybe you have to go in and do a, some kind of change, and then hit the button to get the second exposure. So I'll show you how that works. If I make this blue and blue, these arrows blue and blue, and then we come back into here, and we shoot, we're going to get exposure one, exposure two, right after each other. If we go back and turn off this blue arrow, now when I shoot, it just shoots the first exposure. It waits for me to shoot the second exposure. And while we're talking about exposures, in this upper left-hand corner, you'll see these dots. These will show you what exposure you're on. And this is a perfect case where being able to peek up here and say, oh, I'm on exposure two. OK. And then I shoot. And then we're back at one. You can also see this referenced in the exposure sheet right here. These X's represent the exposures. The next icon is this V, and V is for video. When you shoot a video frame, it's usually for animation purposes, and you're comparing the live view to the previously shot video, and that's very important to do it that way. What you don't want to do is be comparing live video feed to already shot frames in full res, because they won't line up exactly. So you always want apples to apples. This V basically says, do you want me to capture live video? And so for instance, if all of your animation for the animator is being done on exposure one, and then they're just hitting the button and it's going through the paces on the other shots, you may not need to capture video playback for that. You'll still be able to get playback always with the high res playback. But you know, it might just speed things up to turn that little V off. We give you the option. Then as I said before, there's the link. And then this is a color. So you can assign a color. Let's make this a little brighter. We'll make this like a orange or something here. So now you'll see in this upper left-hand corner that the first exposure, which is the one that we're about to shoot, is activated and it's on. If I come back in here to the animation window, shoot it, you'll see it goes from red and then to the sort of olive green showing me that I'm on exposure two, and then back to one. Just an easy way to have a visual reference to show which exposure you're on. The last icon is the lock, and that's just simply a lock. It just locks everything out so you can't adjust it and this is useful if you know that everything's set up maybe you're handing the station off to somebody else you feel a little nervous you go ahead and lock it they'll think twice before they unlock it or maybe you just don't want to bump any of the settings and so that's like a little safety you can do another thing that can be assigned to exposures separately is different lighting program with our DMX so if I go into the DMX lighting area and we turn on a dimmer I think I've got a light set up here. Let me see. Yeah, so we got this little side light. And if you look up here, it shows that we have a global program with an exposure one and an exposure two. We're on global right now. I'm going to turn this light all the way down to zero. Now I'm going to grab the exposure two and separate it. You see, now it's on its own. Now exposure two is its own program. I'm going to go in and turn the light up for exposure two. What should happen now is that when we go to shoot, Exposure 1 will have the light off, and Exposure 2 will have the light on. Let's go back to here just to check. One way we can check is simply to click on the exposure there. And you see I've clicked on Exposure 2, and the light came on. Now we'll go back to our main shooting. And you see the light went right off because it knows we are not on Exposure 2. So I'm going to shoot. Oh, oh, it's telling me i got to get kind of lined up there. This is basically uploading the DMX. The light came on for exposure two, and there's exposure two. I have it set up right now that I have to press the button to shoot both exposures, but I will put that little blue arrow back on. We'll go back in here. I'm hitting the shoot button just once, and now it should go through, turn on the light, shoot the next exposure, take us back, turn off the light, boom. So that wraps up the camera settings tutorial, and you should be able to get in here and play with this and do some creative stuff. Thanks.